Welcome back everyone. This is Brandon Bruce, your technical agronomist across southeast Kansas and western Missouri. I wanted to provide a follow-up to the last corn disease video on a few best management practices to properly submitting a sample to the laboratory. If there's some diseases or challenges out there you're not aware of, um, there's a few things you can, can do to try to make sure you get a fresh, healthy sample to the lab so they can help you get it diagnosed. If you'll follow me over here. So here are just a few tools I carry with me. You know, buckets to try to get, if you're looking at any roots issues, make sure you get that out of the field. And, and in some situations, you're going to want the soil attached with the roots uh, before you get it to the lab. I often carry a smaller shovel for smaller sampling. Um, again, later in the season, if you need to look at stock rots, carry a pair of shears or a uh, knife or even uh, as long as you're wearing gloves, making sure you use a stock splitter if you're looking at stock rots or wanting to get stocks to the lab. Once you get your samples collected, it's important to get them packaged properly. So I want to walk through a few scenarios, whether you're looking at leaf sample, stocks, or roots. So first, on the leaves, I, I like to get them pressed, and I'll put them between some books in the back seat of the truck, uh, try to keep them out of sunlight, and uh, I will include them in a package uh, by themselves, plastic bag, again, make sure you get that dry paper towel. And from a leaf sample, you want to make sure you pull several leaves to get a range of the symptomology across the field. To get that press sealed up, same with stalks, um, you know, depending if you're looking at lower stock or upper stock, but get several stalks to show them the symptomology uh, across that range and get them packaged separate. And then last, if we're looking at a root sample, uh, I, I think here you need to look at the lab's uh, guidelines, whether they want the soil there or they want the soil removed. I've sent some to labs where they want that soil removed. Um, when you're doing that, the soil, you don't want to contaminate any of your other samples or any of your other if you have other samples in the box. So I like to use a rubber band to seal that, to help seal this, keep that soil separate, and then also even put this in another bag uh, just to make sure that the contamination doesn't get to another sample. Um, I will oftentimes submit a lot of the samples through the postal system uh, priority, so that way I don't carry boxes that they've got those. We can get the boxes there, get them packaged properly, get some packing as well. Um, before you get those sealed up, make sure you got your paperwork in there, filled out. And then I like to put my paperwork in a plastic bag to make sure they have a legible copy when they receive it. I think the last thing to, to think about or try to plan is when you submit a sample to the lab, it's best to submit that sample first to midweek. Then I like to overnight it or a priority where they get at least within a couple days. So the lab has a good sample to diagnose. Uh, thank you for watching. and. I hope to see you soon.